morning on Green Power today, we're getting into some hot water. NBC's Lester Holt traveled to Alaska to see how geothermal energy is saving a popular resort thousands of dollars. And he joins us with that. Lester, good morning to you. Matt, good morning to you. The Chena Hot Springs Resort sits miles away from the nearest power grid and for years depended on diesel-run generators. Well, the decision to switch to a clean, cheap, and renewable alternative was easy, but figuring out how to harness the hot springs that made it famous proved to be a challenge. And it's been one that's paid off handsomely. Deep in the snow-covered Alaska wilderness, where it seems spring is always a latecomer, hope springs eternal at this steamy oasis. Ooh, yeah, that's hot. The natural hot springs an hour east of Fairbanks draw thousands from around the world to the Chena Hot Springs Resort, where the waters not only soothe travel-weary guests, but help heat the resort's buildings. Hey, Rusty, you got a copy? But still, burdened with huge diesel fuel bills to generate power on the sprawling remote property, owner Bernie Carl, a man seemingly in perpetual motion, set his sights on finding a cheap and renewable energy source. The answer, he hoped, was bubbling right below his feet. It was coming from the ground, so you knew it was hot, and you knew that if you drilled deeper, you were going to get hotter. But at 165 degrees, well below boiling point, the water Bernie was drawing from this well was not hot enough to drive electricity producing turbines, or at least that was the assumption. These hot springs were discovered just a little over a century ago and word quickly got out of the warm and what some believed were healing waters. But the full potential of this water as a source of energy wasn't tapped until just a year and a half ago. This is supplying electricity to the resort. That's when We're Bernie got together with United Technologies to invent a system that would use that 165 degree water to heat up environmentally safe refrigerant that in turn would produce the necessary steam. Now feel this. Today, two of the revolutionary generators hum around the clock, providing electricity to the entire resort complex, including this greenhouse where the resort grows much of its own produce year round. The more that we get addicted to oil, the better it looks here. When I first bought this place, oil was like 76 cents a gallon. Now it's $3.59 with no tax on it. It was originally gonna take us you know, five to six years to get our debt load paid back on doing this energy project. It looks like now it could be four years. If the price goes higher, maybe I'll do it in three years. Alaska leads the country in the amount of geothermal resources. And yet this is the first time it's been used here to generate electricity. It's sustainable because we're on some hot rock here and then that rock has the opportunity to heat that water back up and then we reproduce it over a long period of time. I started moving hot water around. I mean, that was, was that honestly that simple. It really was. I mean, but you see, people had missed that for all these years. They missed the obvious. In the meantime, the hot water beneath the resort is also key to an equally revolutionary cooling system that has made the resort's ice museum a year-round attraction. 95 gallons a minute of hot water, 75 gallons a minute of cold water. We make 15 tons of refrigeration. First time in the history of man, it's a three pressure absorption chiller. And it's the first and only one. Through all this, Bernie Carl has become both the hottest and coolest thing in the world of renewable energy. And what they've done at China is being closely watched in Alaska's many remote villages that depend on expensive diesel fuel that has to be transported hundreds of miles. And so there's a push for those communities to harness their own renewable energy sources, whether it be geothermal, wind, turbines, turbines, or even tidal power. Matt. That, that contraption he showed you, that system in the building, what did it cost to build? It cost about $2 million. I mean, oh. it was a heavy investment because, as I said, the water wasn't quite hot enough for this, but they said, well, it's got to be a way. They invested in it, and you think it's going to pay for itself in a matter of years. Cool stuff, Lester. Thanks. This morning on Today Goes Green, as part of Green Week, the hottest new thing in staying cool. The Earth is the ultimate pressure cooker, holding vast reserves of geothermal resources. I recently traveled to the far north to see how one thriving business turned hot water from the Earth into liquid gold. It can get cold in Alaska, real cold. But even here, a structure made entirely of ice is on borrowed time as the spring days grow long and warmer. Here at the Chena Hot Springs Resort, beneath a fabric exoskeleton, stands the resort's second attempt at a permanent ice museum. The last place was glorious too, but uh, just uh, the, the elements caught up with us. Meaning it melted. 
a fact that at the time earned resort owner Bernie Carl a fair amount of ridicule. Forbes magazine voted that the dumbest business idea of the year in 2004. If you had talked to my wife, she was furious. You know, the young lady that was interviewing her wrote, she called on the phone, she said, how could you be so stupid as to build something that would melt? I said, well, I took a frozen asset and turned it to a liquid one. But undeterred, Bernie went back to the drawing board, turning to another liquid asset. One that has turned this resort into a model of energy self-sufficiency. The hot springs that made this resort famous. The same soothing water that attracts visitors here from around the world heats the resort, generates electricity, and now even cools the ice museum for just dollars a day. It's called absorption chilling. It's the same as evaporation. You step out of this lake right here and you've got water on you, you feel cool, right? Because, because the water on your skin is evaporating off. This is very important. You have to know how to pour the drink. These days, Bernie bellies up to the ice bar with his guests to toast the geothermal solution that keeps this place standing. A cold drink will probably go down a lot better in the summer when temperatures in this part of Alaska can rise above 80 degrees. And believe it or not, unlike a lot of ice structures around the world, this one's open year round. Husband and wife artists and ice carver Steve and Heather Bryce helped create the museum. Do you find yourself glancing over to the thermometer from time to time, making sure it's cool enough? Uh, this time of year, yeah. In an environment where temperatures constantly hover in the 20s, the couple made the furnishings, from stunning and intricate sculptures, to luxurious bedrooms, to the ice bar, where a drink from an ice-carved martini glass is one of the highlights. The martinis have gotten hotter and hotter, and I'm just pressed to keep up with the demand. Both the system that keeps this place on ice and the generators that power the resort required patented new technology because the 165-degree spring water that runs beneath the property wasn't hot enough to run traditional geothermal systems. But the investment, which has saved the resort hundreds of thousands of dollars in diesel fuel cost, has also paid off in ways no one expected. This last year, we did an exit poll of people that come here and they fill out a card. 14% of our guests came to Chena Hot Springs because of renewable energy. I mean, you can actually get rewarded for just doing what's right. I mean, it's pretty awesome to think that you can make a living selling nature and we get to keep it. I mean, look around you. This is what we sell. And I was so cold and I kept looking over that warm water thinking maybe I should Did you go in the water? No, I didn't because you have to walk, you know, with your shirt off and your trunks. <laughs> and <laughs> I went that would have been great television. I went to a hot shower instead.